still working on video part three and it will deal with recognizing the volume essentially counting it t plus two settlements how that affects it uh, margin calls force coverings and eventually short exhaust and down the road i'm hoping we can get a good video out on tape reading especially for the short side and hopefully we get a collab with somebody else in here for today i wanted to share some of my process how i over analyze the trades that i made last week and see where i can improve on the mistakes that i've made so i scalped acy um, and i'll include some of the entries and exits that i had on this i had uh, orph uh, and some other names but the two that i should have done a lot better on were cnfr and PBTS. CNFR, the news was an earnings beat, and in many cases, that is a light sell the news event. A light reaction I would ignore, except that we have a wild overreaction, 100% rise, practically with no volume in after hours. Logically, earnings beat should drive the price up, but that's the beauty with low floats. It's an extreme overreaction. I shorted it at 415. As you see, I drew my lines um, ahead of time when I saw the news and I saw it starting to rise. So we have multiple levels of supply. They don't have as much volume, so there was a bit of an issue with that. But you still have an accumulation and a respected supply demand area around $4. So that's where I was interested in if it goes over that. And my first short was actually 415 and did not end up adding here because we were approaching all-time high area and it is still relatively low flow. CNFR is an insurance company and it is not related to any other runner sectors that we have. Uh, this goes back to video one. Do some research on what you are trading. They reported a nice sales beat and operating income of over a million versus just zero the quarter prior. However, they also wrote down a million uh, loss from uh, equity re-evaluation that they had in investments. So basically digging further, net value of the company hasn't really changed like their operations are coming back as expected after the coronavirus but they're not necessarily worth twice as much of what they were before so provides us an opportunity um there are no surprises in an insurance company's earnings capacity there's no catalyst that will make the price explode it's not crypto it's not biotech it's not ar it's not a lidar bio candidate and so on so taking all that into consideration is 100 percent really warranted well, no, you have the potential of a short squeeze, but once you get around that, you just have to recognize, and something that I missed was that, I mean, my, the, the mistakes were, A, I woke up too late. I woke up after 7 a.m., and we had a really nice pop um, just before 6 that essentially put in a double top. It was a good rejection, should have taken it, and... I just overslept. Mistake number two, I had my own line of 397, and once it rejected that, that was another area that I should have um, sized up and expect this kind of wind down to three dollars that it did. And mistake number three was forgetting that it was a low float and ignoring the fact that it could recover. If it recovers, have it a, have a pre-planned entry. Another issue that I had was I mistraded PBTS. Um, and this was probably the perfect short. Um, unlike CNFR, PBTS has a massive dilution. It has a shelf, a warrant, a note, and ATM all in effect. And you can find this for free on dilutiontracker.com. Uh, they have an ATM for 24.5 million and a shelf for 190 million. And if somehow later on they get near four, they have warrants there as well at 367 apiece. Unlike CNFR, they had more interesting news. Uh, not better, just interesting that they used the word blockchain. So that was enough to attract a quarter million of shares traded. And if the dilution wasn't so massive, the low float could have allowed for this to go higher. Because people would think, okay, well, they have all this, all this dilution, they're going to drop. And then, you know, potentially too much volume enters on the short side and it ends up squeezing out. And so that was a bit of a worry for me, but again, I pre-drew my lines. We had bag holders averaged at $4. So really, uh, you know, respect to the previous supply areas in the past. So I wasn't so worried. I was just thinking worst case scenario, I'm gonna add uh, more size under $4, uh, over three, uh, 280, 240s. 
so I never really sized in properly and that's fine that fits my risk profile where I made the mistake is uh, I shorted for the most part over 215 219 and I covered under 190s the mistake was covering in the pre-market too much and not adding this pop and then covering everything at the open too early there are just too many back holders they're trying to get out and propping up the stock is not working because there's just too much volume on it at this point even if it's a relatively low flow so could have handled that better recognize back holder dilutions um, relatively weak news and the fact that it's an oldie fade uh, what I'm looking for in the future I'm still interested in both of those stocks PBTS especially it still has a lot of volume that has not exited so we could see another pop potentially uh, I'm looking at ACY I've been scalping this up and down a little bit but um, now with the news of warrants two things could happen because of the warrants people may think okay it's gonna go down and if they don't understand the warrants is basically a call option doesn't have an expiration they could pile into the short side too early too fast and create another short squeeze so I'm not gonna join it unless there's a mini short exhaust and what I'm talking about is what happened on the 11th from 14 to 33 within you know just a couple hours what happened the next day uh, because I shorted all of these pops so far and I've covered um, on the uh, flushes so it's not something that I can add size to it's too risky at this point but I will continue to keep scalping the pops look at the volume the majority of shorts that were in on the first short squeeze should have had the option to exit or were squeezed out at the greater volume on the secondary short squeeze there's just not much ammunition left all that's driving this is shorts being squeezed out once they're all gone there's nothing propping it up so I'm looking at ACY um, hopefully I would like to see it pop over 35 36 um, I need a fast move something like a few dollars uh, within 30 minutes uh, three four five dollars in 30 minutes I'm interested in that and then I would take a short starter Otherwise, I'll just wait. Uh, full C is another one that I'm looking at. Kind of the same theory, the same thesis is shorts piled in too fast. Uh, they kept getting squeezed out and then they heard the offering. They piled on even more and then professional manipulators pushed that up higher. But really the offering also creates a base to where it's a bottom at $19. So it's uh, elevator risk. ACY and Full C are both elevator risk. So both of those I'm looking for short exhaust. I need two, three dollar move within a few minutes, similar to what happened the day before, uh, from 21 to 25 in a few hours, relatively quick, uh, expanded volume. I'm interested to take it for a starter, but I wouldn't be able to size into it because there's no bag holders, there's no massive dilution, there's no ATM, etc. I'm also looking at CVV, I'm hoping it pops to 5.5 or higher, I would take it for a short. And I'm looking for A and Y, same thing, I let this one go. Um, I think I was focused on other stocks, but the higher the better, 450s, 5s, I would take a starter on those. So, so far that's what I'm looking at, and I'm sure there'll be a lot more in the morning. But I always like going over the previous plays, because especially if they popped up and dumped off well now you have created more bag holders so the next pop is that much safer than the first pop so yeah